Hello and welcome to another video, uh, so we're checking out this Haven deck, this is a more Lapis-esque Haven deck, again it's very similar to the one that I have covered about a week ago, uh, this deck was interesting to me mainly because it had won a Grand Prix at 5-0 in the early stages, so I wanted to at least check it out, so why not? It's a pretty okay deck. I found a little bit of awkwardness with it as the matchups just don't tend to go your way a lot of the time. If you come up against Rune and things like that, it can be a little difficult, but overall it's still a solid deck and we'll give it a go. So of course this deck is using two cores, the Seraph core as a backup plan for late game draws, which is good against things like Rune, Haven, those sort of matchups where you're going to be drawn out. And a Tenko engine, which is more your mid to early game engine. So you want to run that early, get that out, really pressure your opponent down, especially if you're in a, something like a bat match where you really want to just kind of keep your health up while pinging off followers is really quite handy. So of course, early game, looking for some early drops. Sometimes I don't mind keeping Lapis if I'm going into a longer game. So against Rune, typically Lapis can be an okay hold. So it's not usually too bad, as it is a harder card to pull in this deck sometimes. But of course, that doesn't make it anywhere near bad, of course, this is going to be pretty solid overall. And we start off reasonably well. I'm going to build an unlimited version of this Lapis deck. Really quite interesting to go with Gold City and things like that, it should be a lot of fun. So we've got Global Stairways as our next follow-up with a pretty decent white temple again. So we're actually stacking temples now, which is really good against Rune. We're going to keep our health up well, and we're going to quickly get a couple of good bodies onto the board. Of course, Light Mage is pretty nice for our opponent as well. That's a really nice pick up there. But not going to be really enough. So, I did go for a pretty decent card here. Going for a really nice heal is always what you want. Sometimes I'll take the damage one, especially if I've got a 6-6 on board, then the damage actually becomes fairly substantial and can do a lot of damage to the opponent's followers very quickly. So I don't mind taking these early missiles, it means they're not going to be burning me down too quickly in the mid to late game, which is pretty decent. And we can pretty much just take this now. I was looking for a good draw there, and Mori's okay, definitely not the best draw. But it does mean I get two 6-6 six, six bodies that my opponent has to deal with next turn. So we're mainly just pushing it to buy a little bit of time until the Lapis play. It's great that you can actually use Lapis and Thamize in turn with each other and they activate pretty well. Giving you the amulet practically for free. So even if your opponent decides they don't want to attack into it, you can still trigger it yourself. Having a self-trigger like that is always handy. And I go for the Evo attack, really just pressuring out the rune player as much as I could. They go for the Mysterium Prodigy, and then a Blockade, which is fairly damaging. Especially with Missiles, so they're actually going to wipe this board out, which is a bit disappointing. They might have been able to do a little bit better if they had went for the Evo trade on the 4-6, I think it was. Would have been a little better. But that was still a reasonably solid play, as they were going to lose everything no matter what. So, we get a free turn to play Lapis. Keeping ourselves healed up nicely. Our opponent just kind of putting down the law here. Luckily, they even triggered my Lapis for me, so why not? Unless you can banish an amulet, it's not easy to remove. As any destruction, of course, will trigger it. And there is the first trigger, so we get Omen of Repose, which I like using for this strategy. It works pretty nicely, being able to drop and draw. Unfortunately, we didn't get the draw we wanted. We wanted another, like, Hollow Dogma to really get this off, which is why I go for Hollow Dogma there as well. Unfortunately, we miss out, but a Black Inscription on Evo will wipe out this board. Even, I think, with the Mysteria card, they're not going to be able to drop me from 20 to 0, so we would win the game pretty much either way. Then, next up, we actually have a, a Blood matchup. So this is one where you want to be more aggressive and go for the early Tenko plays to really pressure your opponent out. Also, holding on to banishes where you can can always be quite an advantage, but we start off with a pretty ideal hand, honestly. Jeweled Prince Priestess into Tenko Shrine and White Temple is actually really solid. Although the 6-drop isn't that handy. I've found that he's not that handy at the moment. If you come up against some decks, he's quite good. So if you get in a mirror, comes in handy. If you get into the 
uh, portal matchups, he can be handy, but I haven't had those matchups be super popular, so I'm not sure whether it would actually be worth it. He's kind of the reason I really wanted to check this deck out, though. So we get a nice turn 3, kind of stacking our hand up, just kind of putting the pressure down where we need. And our opponent's just going for a pretty generic pure-hearted singer. No real threat to me at this point. Don't really have a great turn 2 play, though, which I'm a little disappointed about. I was tempted to go for the Black Inscription Mori play, but I really felt like I wanted to get the White Temple out so I could use Tenko. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to be that great. As they are triggering a lot of things here. And it looks like they are going to get their 5-3 out. Of course, the Black Inscription is going to be handy for that, which is why I held on to it mainly. Because you can't go wrong trying to deal with this. So turn 5 is just going to be a wipe the board turn as I don't really have many options and if I can stop their healing that's pretty much what you want just keep our health up slightly by getting these little heal effects there is the Vera which I actually don't have any good way to deal with that was probably the only turn that was awkward for me I really wanted a way to deal with Vera but without wasting cards I didn't really have that option as I would have had to have gone for Omen of Repose, and I didn't want to give them the ramp into um, their 7-drop play at that point. And getting Tenko out was going to be pretty huge, so now it doesn't really matter, they're going to get to 7 next turn anyway, so we may as well go for it. We'll also get a decent ping effect here, regardless of what we hit. And a quick Evo, which will also protect Omen of Repose, as he has to take 2 hits, as long as he's above 4 health. Four or above, yeah, I'll have to take those hits. So there's a Dark Feast Bat. Does decide to go face with an Evo, makes sense. Although they didn't deal a lot of damage with their Dark Feast Bat, meaning we're in a pretty good spot. Even a double Dark Feast Bat shouldn't take us out. Which does mean we can pretty much just throw this down. The only thing here was that I think I probably could have went for lethal. Actually, I 100% sure. I could have went for lethal at this point. If instead of do using the ping effect here, I had have played my Tenko, attacked with the 4-4, healed up, I could have got those extra couple of pings we would have needed. Of course, overall didn't really make the biggest of differences, as they couldn't end up killing me anyway, but it was you know, I could have finished it without any kind of risk at all and just won the game straight out. A little disappointed I missed that myself, honestly. So this deck has two really defined strategies, of course, going full on Tenko, going into Lapis, kind of going into both. Really works out in that way. Honestly, I'd rather just go for a straight Tenko build myself, maybe with just one Lapis as an extra and not worrying about running the extra engine to support it, like just dropping the Hollow Dogmas and not really worrying about them, but pretty solid deck, does its job pretty nicely. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. If you want to check it out, link will be in the description below. Hit the like button and subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.